Hi, welcome back to the Daisy Regrowth Project. Um, just a quick reminder of what we're um, creating together uh, over the next couple of months. It's our virtual woodland uh, made from uh, all of the artwork that we're going to do during these special um, and unusual uh, lockdown activities. We made some seedlings last time and this time we're going to make some young trees to plant in the woodland. They're called saplings um, and uh, the project is quite a big project so I'm going to divide it over two videos uh, so that you can take your time with it. First, for our inspiration, let's have a look at an artist called Max Ernst. He was born in Germany in 1891, so a long time ago, and he lived mostly in Paris, in France, um, with a group of um, other artists. And he was um, a poet, uh, a painter, a sculptor. Um, and um, he loved to experiment with art. Um, this led to him inventing um, some new techniques, uh, a sort of way of uh, working, uh, which we're going to use in our art today. It's called frottage. That's a funny word. He called it that himself and it's a rubbing really <laughs> it means it's it's when you put a piece of paper over a textured surface and rub your pencil over it um, to make a print or an impression frottage Max Ernst was staying in a hotel room when he discovered this I'm not sure whether he had to stay in his um, hotel room like we are having to stay in our houses, but he discovered it by um, putting a piece of paper on the floor and rubbing the floorboards. And he was fascinated with the results. Um, and so he started to look for textures everywhere in his house and in his garden and taking rubbings from them and then making his artwork from those rubbings. Now we have had to stay in our homes and our houses uh, haven't we? And in our gardens too, if we're lucky to have a garden. For this project, like Max Ernst, I want you to start looking uh, for things, ordinary things in your home or wherever you are, um, to see if you can find some textures that you would quite like to take some rubbings from. So let me tell you what you're looking for. Texture is a kind of pattern, um, but it's a pattern that you can feel so that when you lay your paper over it and rub it with a pencil, the pattern magically appears. So let me show you some texture that I found in my house. Um, here is a pattern uh, on a chair um, and I've rubbed it. Here's the rubbing. Here's a, a pattern on a storage heater. Don't worry, it was switched off. It wasn't hot. And I took a rubbing from that. Here it is. Uh, and here's a lovely pattern on my wardrobe door. It was quite difficult to take the rubbing, but I persevered and got it. Here it is. Isn't that lovely? Have some fun and start being a texture detective <laughs> and see what you can find where you are. Okay, so let's start our project, our rubbing project, our frottage project. You'll need a piece of paper 
um, a thin piece of paper um, and you'll need some textures. So I've brought some textures to um, to the desk here to work on to show you um, rather than doing them about the house. Um, you might be able to do that with some of your uh, objects too that you find. You'll need also some something to rub with. Um, I'm just taking the paper off of a wax crayon here. The wax crayons really work well. If you've got a nice dark wax crayon, use, use that and you can use it on its side, which um, really works well. Otherwise, use a pencil, um, uh, but uh, sharpen the pencil so that there's a quite a long piece of lead so that you can use that on its side as well rather than um, the point of it um, and uh, yes yeah, so, so use both of those on the sides um, I'm going to uh, use a comb for some texture to begin with and I'll just show you with the wax crayon how well that works I'm just using it on its side as I said and gently rubbing it over and look at that it appears lovely straight away so very very nice uh, for the comb and it's nice um, and easy um, but I'm going to for this demonstration I'm going to use a pencil because you might not have um, a, a wax crayon which is fine So let's have a look at the textures. That um, was the bottom of the shoe. This is an onion bag and here's some packaging. Um, that's what I've brought to my table. Um, I'm going to just find a layer and tear it off of the packaging so it reveals some lovely um, texture there, some corrugated card. Um, and that works really well. So I'm just going to start my piece of paper and um, I'm holding my pencil in the palm of my hand and using the side uh, rather than the point and uh, just to and fro rubbing um, until the texture starts um, becoming really clear and then turn the texture around um, so that the lines if uh, are going in a different direction or, uh, or whatever pattern you're using so that it kind of goes into different directions. That looks really, really nice um, together. You can butt them up. You can go right up to where you rubbed before and overlap if you want. Um, but uh, don't just do it all in the same direction. I'm using the um, onion bag now for a bit of nice... Uh, texture here it comes out just exactly what's uh, what the bag looks like but only like a drawing um, and you can see my technique my frottaging technique to and throw with the pencil on its side and that works really really well let's try a bit of comb and that works really well because it's metal metal really um, kind of goes well for this kind of thing. Now our aim is to fill this whole page, this whole whole piece of paper up uh, with different um, rubbings, different textures um, and uh, if you can only find a few that is absolutely fine. Just keep turning them around so uh, they go in different directions and kind of you know you have a little space uh, you know if you have a little space you can fill the space up well I'm going to use the shoe here now that's a bit more difficult because it's uh, you know it's not a flat object but try and hold your paper still as you take the rubbing you might need to get a somebody to help you there and uh, you know if you're using the bottom of a shoe because the shoes have so many great textures on the bottom of them, bottom of them um, it might be a good idea to wash your hands afterwards because 
you just don't know where your shoe has been. So wash your hands after if, you, if you've used shoes. Well, that turned out really well. Let's try a bit more of that over here. Oh, that's, that's really nice. You'd be amazed how many patterns are on the bottom of shoes. Okay, so um, you can see the start of that. I've gone off and found some, a few more um, different uh, textures. So I, I wanted some round things. So I found my coaster, which has got a raised wheel, and I found some coins. Um, so that coaster rubs really, really well because it's very raised texture on that. Um, and that gives me something because I had a lot of lines in my found um, textures and I just wanted something a little bit different. So now the coin, oh this really works well. Um, not only the detail of the coin, but also the roundness of it. Look at that, that's really, really nice, that round shape in the middle of all of those, all of those lines. Now let's put another, this is a 20p. You can feel the uh, coin under the paper so you know where it's going to go. And careful you don't move it, just really gently rub your pencil or your wax crayon over the top. And that's picked that up extremely well. It's so nice to have some round shapes in the midst of all of those uh, lines. Right, let's go back to some lines. Um, and I think I might uh, speed up the film here so that I don't waste too much of your time um, talking uh, while you can be uh, doing starting your project. Um, but I want you to see this piece through, so I'm just going to speed up the film here. Okay. As you can see, I'm starting to fill up some gaps, taking it right to the edge. Take your time. It says this film's on fast, so it looks like I'm doing it really quickly, but I'm not. Take your time and decide which part, which which texture goes where, and enjoy it. It's a very nice thing to do. The other thing is, don't worry if your um, rubbings look a bit pale um, because uh, my pencil is quite dark here. I'm using a 4B uh, which is quite a soft and dark pencil. Uh, if you're using an HB which is the um, normal pencil um, it could look a lot lighter than this but it doesn't really matter because well I want you to photograph these and uh, send them to me when you've filled up your page or pages of um, textures and I'm going to use these in the woodlands but I want you to hang on to them till next week because we're going to be doing something else with them. Um, so uh, and, and if the uh, pencil is quite light and it's very pale, it doesn't really matter, we can sort that out. Um, either on the computer when I'm using them for the woodland or uh, when you're making it into your um, sapling tree. But I think you agree, it's starting to look very, very nice indeed. I've just got a little bit more now um, to fill in. Um, it's I want to fill up all the gaps and I've got a whole sheet then of textures. Photograph it um, overhead and flat and send it to me on um, that email address. I'll um, 
um, and I can do something with it. Now, let's go on to the next thing. The next bit of frottage that we're doing, the next bit of rubbings, is with leaves from the garden. If you can't um, go into the garden to get some leaves, perhaps you could ask somebody to gather some for you. You're looking for some strong shapes and some uh, strong uh, veins on them, the texture on them, uh, to make good rubbings. If they're very, very soft, the leaves, they don't come out terribly well. Um, but they do come out, so, you know, and it's all usable. So, um, have a go. Gather some leaves if you can, um, and let's get started. So, I am going to use uh some wax um, just to show you the wax for this and i'm going to use it in greens now i recommend using it in green because this is going to be for the tops of our trees um, and um, in the same way you can make a kind of very uh, abstract pattern where it's just all kinds of shapes going into it or you can have a, a pattern that you can plan um, I'm using just one leaf here and turning it around um, and putting it, laying it down, putting it into position um, and uh, getting quite a nice effect with the wax crayon. So just rubbing it over. It's really pretty, isn't it? Just moving the leaf uh, and then kind of more or less judging where the um, leaf is going to go on the paper. On the other side, look how quick it is with the wax grey and compared to the pencil. You've only got pencil, it's fine to do it with the pencil as well. If you can, do it with a green crayon though, uh, a green pencil rather than. Um, a, 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 a grey one. And what I'm doing here is um, I'm going to use, I'm going to do a second layer with a lighter green. It's hard to see on the camera, but um, I'm going to, I'm using a different kind of uh, leaf and it's coming out. You can't see it very well, but it is coming out. And just giving that texture another kind of dimension it's really really nice in the flesh it's very very nice um, sometimes you start squashing the leaf and it doesn't come out so well so you know if you've got a couple of the same one um, then you can kind of renew it black currant bush. There. Leave it there. Just want to fill in some gaps. There we go. And I'm quite pleased with that. Very nice. So here's another one. I'm putting this on a super fast film now so I'm working very speedily um, a couple of uh, lovely ferns which make beautiful rubbings um, and I'm just stroking it again with the wax crayon and it comes up beautifully um, you can go over it and make it a little bit darker if you're doing it in pencil yet yeah, it's going to take you longer but it will be worthwhile because fern is a beautiful thing um, and then I am going to rearrange uh, and I'm going to do it in blue on top and that's uh, worked out very well. But what I want to say to you um, now is that if you um, have done it in pencil, you can work into it with some crayons afterwards, even, um, uh, you know, uh, going over and picking out leaf shapes and drawing some leaves in. Drawing on top of the textures is absolutely fine and could be really nice. 
um, you can do anything you want, this is your artwork, but what you're aiming for is to have uh, a couple of pages or even just one page of uh, leaf textures um, that we can use next week. And what I would really like you to do right now, uh, as soon as you've finished them, is to photograph them overhead and send them to me uh, on this email address. Um, and it's on the end of the video too. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I hope to speak to you soon and see you next time. Bye.